So, thank you all. So, uh, so, the, so what we'll be looking at today is a couple, couple of things, mainly the Civis AM core team, what it does, how do the things get fixed in the core world, and also just briefly touching on the end, hopefully a new extension, which is uh, SMS conversations in Civis AM. So, so what is the core team? So you probably have heard a bit uh, going on about uh, Civis AM's core team. You've probably heard that phrase used a bit. So what are they? So Primarily, they are the owners of the CVCRM Limited Liability Company. So that's what LLC is. It's a limited liability company based uh, for official purposes in uh, California. So they are the owners. They own the product CVCRM. Do they? I believe so. That's my understanding. It's Josh. Okay. We'll get there. So, but they are also, they're essentially the core group of people that are in some way paid slash they manage the projects. They manage the release, releases for of CVCRM. They overarchingly see over all the sort of test infrastructure, the demo, the CVCRM.org demo sites. Obviously, a number of partners have now generated their own demo sites, uh, but they are the overarching... They obviously are, with a bunch of volunteers, they coordinate the CVCRM.org website. So, and we had bunch of help from uh, particularly Josh uh, in organising this uh, this conference. Uh, so he's one. So yeah. So, but oops. Uh, and as was probably mentioned by, earlier by Pete, uh, all this whole project started out with uh, Don Lobo and David Greenberg, uh, a couple of guys in I think it was Lobo's kitchen, if I recall. Yeah, <laughs> Lobo had been the. European engineering manager of Yahoo or something before that, yeah. <laughs> and David had been working at Groundspring. Uh, it was a for-profit group providing services for not-for-profits. Mm. So, it was, yeah, a couple of guys, and they realised there was sort of a need for sort of a contact relationship management thing, particularly aimed at not-for-profit. So that's where they sort of started out from. So... Uh, and there was now four members. So the size of the team fluctuated. I think it grew fairly large before I really came on board. But then Dave and Lobo stepped back. Uh, and but we've now got four members. So Tim Motten, uh, he's probably the, one of the lead sort of architectural uh, geniuses of the project. Uh, he also worked... Uh, Ali and I both interact a lot with him. And he coordinates a lot of the release work, so he's very big on that. Uh, the other person you'll probably see if you ever look on the issue queue or look on uh, various forums, you'll probably run into this person, Colin Watts. Uh, he does a lot of the front end, is a big front end UI person, probably does a lot of JavaScript work. Web form, yep, web form, thank you very much. Yep, so he, he's one of the big, so yeah, so obviously a big sort of front end, end user angled person. Uh, Josh Goiner, Goins, uh, can't pronounce the last name. <laughs> so, but Josh is very much unlike the other two. He doesn't do coding, doesn't do anything like that, but he loves marketing. So he's definitely come on board. So he takes on board a lot of the organizing TV cons, Works with the marketing, works with uh, the various working groups on that sort of front, does a lot of stuff on the sort of content side of uh, cvcm.org. Sometimes has to tap on some of the volunteers like Michael McAndrew and others to actually do some of the work, not some of the technical, some of the setup work, uh, some of the technical work there, but essentially. And recently, uh, Matthew Luffy, I couldn't find an email for him, uh, but Mathieu is, uh, has just come on board. He mainly does a lot of the sort of system administrative work for civicerum.org. Uh, so he basically, if there's if like the site goes down or whatever, Mathieu normally gets pinged and he gets all the sort of alerts for all the core stuff. Uh, also, the other big thing that Mathieu does is translations, So which is probably not a big thing for us, but... Uh, it's a big thing for him and, and others. So he's worked extensively, especially on the French translation. So he lives in Montreal, uh, or close to Montreal. So obviously he got in. the big, big French Canadian influence coming through there. So and I think French is one of the biggest translations, uh, close to me. Yeah. 
French, and then I think maybe Spanish or so, something like that. Like, but yeah, so he's sort of heading it in inverted commas heads up the translation team. So there's a working group and there's a Matamos channel for that. So that's them. So what are their responsibilities essentially? So obviously the biggest thing is coordination of the monthly CVCRM releases. So they work, they put out all the tarball, all the sort of downloadable software. So that's their, they basically do a lot of that sort of big job. Uh, Obviously, coordination bug releases, so they do get involved, obviously, with, uh, very, in various ways. Sometimes they'll actually fix bu fix some of the bugs themselves. They, they might get paid to do some feature work. They might also they, they, they merge stuff into the core repo, so that's one of their sort of overarching duties. And there are the mergers, obviously. Uh, Eileen is one, so uh, I'm not at this point, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but essentially, we've got a sort of a core group of people who are mergers of the core code base. And their responsibility... For those who yeah. don't know, would you mind just quickly explaining what merge means? Yep. So, okay. So, say, so we have this big wad of code which basically runs CBCRM. Uh, and when, and I'll get to how things get loaded, but oftentimes you'll have Francis or Justin or myself or Eileen will propose various patches to that code base, and it's the job of the merger to decide does does this work? Is this is this the right sort of fix? Should that get merged into the bigger code base of CVCRM? So it's quite an important role, and obviously core teams got a major. Uh, responsibility in not only actually doing the merge, but deciding who gets those merge rights. So it's part of that governance routine, uh, primarily because it's sort of such an important thing. Because as we all know, regressions aren't great. Like we we do suffer regressions sometimes. So regression is where a fix goes in, but then it breaks something else. So and it's sort of their job. So there's another role. Uh, so there's a obviously if you make want to make a change either to fix something or to improve something and you put up a patch or something there there's another role in the middle which is a reviewer and the reviewer could be anyone you know if you are in a, such a position that you know you've got a problem you try out one of these patches if you're able to do that um, and you comment and say wow this works this fixes my problem in that instance you're the reviewer um, you may not be the only reviewer, um, and the merger has the responsibility of deciding whether the review that's been done by other people is otherwise adequate or whether they need to do some additional review in that process. So there might be two people or there might be three people involved in that process, or there could be 50. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody gets their two cents sometimes. Uh, obviously, one of the other big, big aspects is we are... Like we are dealing with fairly sensitive stuff, and we all get, and the core team does get from time to time uh, reports of security vulnerabilities with the code base. So it's just the nature of things. It's an, it's an open source software, so anybody can down, download it, test it out. There'll be security researchers who'll have a go at our our software, see what happens, and they email the. I should probably have put it up there, but there's an email address: security at cvcrm.org which goes to a team which I and I as well as a number of others, and but mainly the core team is responsible for coordin of receiving that, trying to verify it, and going through the necessary procedures to fix those in fix those without sort of alerting people to so, what's going on. So security obviously happens in free and you know security issues come up in free and not for free software, um, but as a open source software we have to be a bit more open about it then you know microsoft just sneaks it out but <laughs> you know we we have to be a bit more clear about what we're doing with security but yeah it is a, and obviously as the owners of the product it is their responsibility to make try to make sure the product is as secure as possible and obviously try to get the partners involved in doing a lot of that sort of work as well so and as i sort of briefly mentioned uh all this sort of governance, so in determining who's the merger or how best to work with a lot of the partner programs or, or other programs, all that sort of governance work about how you engage with your wider community, that is the, primarily that is there. Obviously, they consult, and Tim is the one who does a lot of consulting a lot of the time. 
and coming up with drafts of stuff and that and it's part of the, their job to sort of undertake that governance work and come up with those frameworks that we then all participate in as part of the community. So, and importantly, I mentioned from the engagement project program. So Josh has done a bit of this as well, but like, so Agile Wear, Fusion, um, probably guessing some of the others here, are partners with CVC, uh, partners, so they pay dues to the CVC.org, which helps fund a lot of this work, which is very good. And obviously we've got a membership program as well. Uh, so they they coordinate some of that engagement and work work with that and sort of like and it would be remiss of us not to encourage you to become members <laughs> or or if you're a shop uh, become a partner but yeah, yeah that's it's a it's a key way of how CVCRM gets funded uh, so I think probably most of the budget gets funded out of that but obviously sometimes they get paid by some partners so just an example. Uh, the Mosaico work that Justin will be showing, that was funded primarily by, I think, uh, CompuCorp or maybe one of the and other... And Vita Consulting. Vita Consulting. So they specifically said to core team, hey, we've got some money, we'd like you to work on getting this integrated with Civi. So that was... So, yeah, so obviously marketing, so this is one of the, one of the parts of it. So uh, providing some money for... Uh, CV7 conferences. So obviously, we had two this year, uh, two, already two this year, one in uh, St. Louis in uh, the United States, and also uh, just a couple of weeks ago, one in London, which is quite successful from what I can gather from from everybody. There was a quite, quite an interesting conference. So, and also, they provide, so they come up with a sort of technical architectural overview of where CV7, but also, as Eileen rightly pointed out to me yesterday, one of their biggest jobs is actually mentorship. And like, so it's up to them. So obviously, Francis, I know, and Justin and others have probably been mentored by me, but also by Tim and others uh, in sort of how to work with the community and sort of what's the right practices they should be going through. And obviously providing, saying, oh, maybe this shouldn't be done that way. It should be done this way. So a lot of that sort of technical leadership essentially is part of their role as well. And Tim does that really, really well. Uh, and probably in terms of what's the closeness is probably in terms of the government, I'd say is like the Drupal Association in terms of like how that works with Drupal Core and, not, and the Drupal project. And obviously you've got WordPress Core Group and, uh, and such. So they're probably the two probably closest uh, similar, similar type of organisations if you're wanting to look at that. So... So yeah, so now let's talk about sort of, okay, so you've found, there's been, you want some development done or you've found a bug in CV. So we used to go, so one of the biggest changes recently has happened is we used to have major CV releases about once every 12 months, I'd say, and, yeah. and that was quite problematic and, and Eileen started the process of having these LTSs or long-term stability releases that happened. I think that started with 4.2 or 4.4. Yeah, that was uh, really Fusion was running its own kind of repo with patches and that pretty much became the LTS because other people wanted to use the approach that Fusion was using. So picking on that about uh, 18 months ago, or maybe a bit less than that, Tim and Coleman went to the community and said, look, we want to actually go to this idea of Lead by extension, iterate by a month. Now, what does that all mean? Basically, it means some of the big changes. So, for example, actually, I'll just... So, for example, CVK is 5.0, and that's something that Cortan's been working on recently. That's a big revamp of the UI, and we know that's potentially going to introduce significant changes for end users. So, and that's a big leap. So, rather than trying to get that committed into core and doing all that sort of work themselves, like... And that would take a lot of because anything that ships with core or like well, it, with the core, with core yeah. like with the core code base, if it's not an extension, if it's actually in the core code base, that's going to have an immediate impact on the end users. So leaving by extension means that we're actually going to push that out to an extension. So as an end user, you can choose if you if you look at the screenshots they put up, maybe maybe you like that idea, and I'm going to install that on my site, but. It's also meaning that you're, you choose whether or not you get that. And Eventually, one would expect that it would 
that the existing civvy mm. case would be grandfathered out, but it is a process of grandfathering in mm. the improvements rather than sort of saying this is this big change that's coming right now. It's like you you can adopt this big change more at your own pace. Yeah, and also so and also what we're looking for is sort of more not so much small, but like more discreet, I'd say is probably the way to put it, uh, changes that go into a month to month release. So 4.7 uh, and obviously 4.6 has now had, for the last 12 months, just individual month by month releases. And we've seen some changes, some, um, and for example, like we had a bug, which I think I reported and annoyed Eileen about him for a while until she pointed me in the right direction, uh, <laughs> was payment processor or, or Payment instrument, I think it was, uh, wasn't being correctly set. set. Managed to find, a bug, find, find where it was going on. I wrote, wrote the patch. I also wrote something called a unit test. And that got incorporated in monthly release. Now, unit tests are quite important in terms of the iteration by month process. So what a unit test is, is basically it's a device that coders use to test other pieces of code. So... For example, we have a, like, there's a very simple unit test, which basically calls the PCP API, does it create, and then verifies that it correctly created, and then deletes the PCP record. That's a very simple unit test, and if, for example, someone then, broke, then wrote some code that broke the PCP API, we'd immediately see that because that unit test fails. And it's important that we have unit tests uh, so that then each of those iterations, you've got more and more confidence. And for some example, I think we've currently, in the current 4.7, we've kind of got somewhere around about 5,000 unit tests. So every release each month, we have a reasonable confidence that nothing has broken from the previous month. Now, no, that's not to say that we, we're guaranteeing it, but we have a reasonable confidence. And obviously, more unit tests, more confidence we get. Now, some parts of the code base, especially, some of the forms, like some of the contribution forms, are just really hard to write unit tests for. And that's just a problem, not so much with the code base, but it's sort of just the nature of these things, like, especially when you're trying to submit lot fictional live data to the system to try to get it to do something. So how does this, for an end user like you, like, let's, so now Anta, I think, has been working with Fusion. So let's say Anta runs, runs into a problem. If they don't have the staffing, they'll bring up Fusion and say, hey, we've got this problem. Fusion then, uh, or Fusion or Agile, where whoever it is. Well, then, uh, generally as a partner of, or some, will then see if they can reproduce it, especially if, and so even better, if they can reproduce it on the civicrm.org demo. Because that's running essentially what is the current master code, what is the next, one of the next releases uh, code. So if that's reproducible there, that's a really good sign that it's actually a bug in the, in the code base, not some customization that's on that particular site. So, and sometimes, like, for example, my organization, the Australian Greens, we have four IT, well, semi-IT staff. So we can actually, sometimes between the four of us, we'll actually fix it ourselves and then push the patch upstream. But other times, if it is fully reproducible, then there'll, there'll be a ticket logged in the global CVCRM JIRA uh, which is a ticket logging system. I, I think uh, it's not quite service desk, but it's very similar. So some of you who have got Agile have probably been seeing Jira around the place, but yeah. And then the next phase is one, if your hosting provider or your team manages to get a patch working, then you can actually submit what we call a pull request or a code change request to the core code base as we are talking about. And that's when we get all the discussion, the review, everybody starts ducking their two cents in, depending on what the issue is, especially if it's financial. It seems to get everybody, everybody's mind going crazy. So we get some discussion, review, and then if it gets approved, if, it, if everybody says, yes, that fixes the problem, it then gets merged. Now, at the moment, we're essentially, even though we've got month by month releases, we're essentially running on a two-month cycle at this point in time. So we're currently in development now for 4.7.28, which will be released not in, on the 1st of November, but 1st of December. Of first, what, Wednesday. first Wednesday of December. So we have a standard release schedule of first, first Wednesday of every month, 
with the optional, I think, potentially security only being the third Wednesday. But generally speaking, we're only releasing on first Wednesdays. And that's US Pacific time they usually use for that. So it might be a Thursday for, for yeah, us down under. So why does that two month process? So you have a month of development time where patches can be merged. And then that code base gets, for, got, gets branched off. And we have an, an various release candidates. So a release candidate is normally, here's a piece of code. We believe this will be what will get released. And this is a chance for you, for people like, so Agileware might have a bunch of clients. They might decide, oh, they've got test servers. We can actually load that onto a test, onto one of their servers and just give it a try out. And it's sort of a chance to see is there any anything bugs in there and we've recently shifted to having that as a month-long process as it used to be only a couple of weeks but now it's a month-long process so it gives client partners folks out there a month of time to try out the, what is going to be the next month's release and see is there any problems with it or anything not and obviously if there's a revision if there's a problem with the current month's release that's the branch that you would then push the change into and and no and we sort of have a hierarchy in the sense hierarchy in a sense of problems that we try to address if it's a critical problem like for example a data quality uh, da data reporting problem that gets pretty high up the list uh, if it's a regression from the previous month or if it's an inter or what we call an inter RC regression so in the proposed release candidate there's a problem that will get pretty high up and like you know you'll probably see Eileen myself a guy called Munich Deb or that someone from Agile, Agile, whoever it is, they'll probably jump on that pretty quickly and trying to get hang on. So in general, that's how things get merged. Are there any questions on this particular aspect of it? So We'll be running a test later for you. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Yeah. Uh, just a silly question from a newbie in this yeah. case. Um, I'm currently running 477. Will I, can I do an immediate update to 428? Yes. Yes, you, you, yep, yes, you can. Yeah, so you can make that sort of a jump up sometime. That's actually a good point. Some, clients, some sites find it's uh, not easy for them to immediately update, so they might, you might be able to apply patches, but that will need some help from your service provider normally. Like we... We're pretty tech savvy in the in our AG team, so we normally do it ourselves. But yeah, you need to be on quite an old version before it's a problem with updating directly mm. to the latest version. When I say quite an old version, I'm thinking like four years five four years old or something. Below four. Yeah, <laughs> below four 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 two four point one. <laughs> that, any, any, any advance on 4.1? Yeah. 3.4. <laughs> so if you're on one of those versions, work with uh, someone else to help yeah. you. But if you're on anything 4.5 or 4.6 or 4.7, just fine. And I should just make a note that currently we have two supported release versions. That's 4.6, obviously, and 4.7. So they are the ones that would that if we get a security report, we would get work on those. But if we got, a, say, a security report on 4.4, it would be... I don't think we'd probably work on it. It's like, yeah. Yep. You didn't mention Joomla. <laughs> is there anyone else? I believe. Oh, yeah, there's some yeah. four Joomla users. So, yeah, that's a good point. So, CV obviously is still very compatible, and well, and the plan is to keep it compatible with Joomla, but the, and there's probably some folks know, so we had what. 20% on WordPress, 60% on Drupal, so you're probably talking about another 20% uh, maybe a bit more on Joomla, but like also there's probably a bit of a mix with like 10%. I've got yeah. something to add. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just wanted to point out too for people who uh, are wanting help or to talk to people, um, there are a couple of places to go. One is civicerium.stackexchange.org which is a place for asking questions. And the other is chat.civicerum.org, which is um, a chat channel. There'll be people in there at various times. If you do go to chat.civicerum.org and you want to ask a question, do not say, can I ask a question? Or <laughs> I, who's here or anything like that. Just put your question out there. And the reason is because 
people actually like to know what your question is before they engage because uh, if they know nothing about it, then they've got nothing but if you, you know, nothing to say, and then they'll just be going, come here, hmm, nice, yeah, I agree, that's a problem. Um, so if you've got, you know, if you want to say, look, I had this issue, this is all the things I see, any ideas, then you're far more likely to get a response than if you sort of try and do some pleasantries. So go for the jugular. And I should also add, it's usually helpful. So, for example, if you are on Joomla or something and you ask a question, mention that you are on Joomla or WordPress. Now... Most of the time, your your problems come going to be with the sort of generic code that's for all service areas. Sometimes there will be problems with uh, specific integration with uh, with those CMSs. So, or it may not be that you're asking about a problem. You may yeah. be asking for a way to do something, yes. and the answers will differ significantly mm. if people know what CMS is. There's also channels on there which are kind of called off-topic, and it's acceptable just to go on and talk about your cat on that channel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Cats are okay on off-topic. <laughs> but, yes, the, I should also point out, yeah, it's sort of, especially if you're in channels like Town Square or the user support channel, don't use at channel because that sends notifications to everybody and who is a member of that channel and that can be quite problematic, especially given it's a global thing. So it can wake some people up. <laughs> but yeah, so, and also the chat is you, chat channel news, uh, usually that's actually a good place. If you see something like cbcrm.org is down, then that's actually somewhere. Now, I'm not sure we have much time to time for the it's other parts. So, yeah. yeah. <coughs> Yep. Uh, my question's a little bit off topic, but I noticed that the chat thing is Mattermost. Yep. I just wanted to ask a question if anyone's had experience installing that themselves. <laughs> if anyone's touched Mattermost, talk to the man in... Thank you. I, it was installed for CBCRM by Matthew Lufty, who we mentioned. Um, and I think it will... I mean, many of you will be perhaps more familiar with Slack or HipChat. Um, the difference with Mattermost is that it is an open source self-hosted product as opposed to <laughs> Slack or HipChat, which, I mean, it is kind of intriguing if you think that most of the world's journalists use things like Slack, and if Slack got hacked one day, it would be fascinating to know what comes out of their internal <laughs> well, communi chats. <laughs> well, these days it's probably, what, Signal or, or WhatsApp, I'm guessing. Uh, and hello to the uh, Australian cabinet on WhatsApp as well. <laughs> Yep. How many instances of Siri Drupal being hacked are now? Oh, we know one. <laughs> it wasn't us. Yeah. <laughs> that was but the hacked. previous developer decided to put a copy of the database in a publicly accessible directory. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not necessarily whether your code is secure, mm -hmm. or whether you lose your laptop and it hasn't got a password on it, which is a big security issue. But you also need to check that your hosting infrastructure is right and somebody doesn't take a copy of the database and put it somewhere for later or safe, you know, safekeeping only to find that it's actually available for the public. Uh, and that and that's for during migration. So uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and that's probably they, all your basic security lessons are probably just as useful for any CMS, any CRM that you use. Don't put things where they're publicly accessible if they're not meant to be publicly accessible. Have decent passwords, but yeah, all that stuff. I, mean, I mean, for interest, there, there are some CBCRM slash cards that you can Google and you can find people's dashboards that are public um, and they shouldn't be. And that's just a bad installation or it's been forgotten about or the people who set it up have gone away, but there's still data there. And if you do something across those, I recommend that you try and get an email through to them and not sound, like nice. a, <laughs> not sound like a stalker or somebody who can't say, look, this looks like you might be showing all the and, and also, yeah, and that's probably actually a good thing. It's like there are some sort of emails or that email addresses, so like security at blah or admin at blah or web ops at blah, they are those sort of email addresses that you probably want to hit up because those sort of email addresses are normally manned by IT mm. staff in, in, yeah, person, but yeah, uh, and those ones are the sort of email addresses that people would be expecting those sorts of reports at, so it's sort of, 
if but, they get an email like that, it's like, okay, it's on the actually gone on. But to ask you a question, though we've had a number of city CRM security patches go out, I'm not aware of anyone having been hacked as a result of any of those. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Oh, and yeah, and it's. Yeah, and and also, if I recall correctly, I think it might have been the Panama Papers or something that was because of a Drupal site that just yeah, got so, yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much for those Thanks. questions. Can you grab somebody as they walk somewhere? Yeah, invite them for a beer or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> we can keep can we talking. Thank you guys very much, not just for their presentation, but for the huge amount of work they do. Thank you. Okay. So we've got Michael.